Hello everyone, welcome back to my playthrough of EWR, Extreme Warfare Revenge. Um, yes, today we have the first episode of Mock Crush Monday, which is the new show that has replaced Monday Night Raw. And yes, today it will be the debuting show and I will be going through all of that show uh, with you all, giving you the commentary on what's happened and all the big events there. Um, yeah, and just to mention as well, um, when I show, like, match reports and that type of thing, like, generally, like, I'll go with what it says there, but um, there's certain bits I want to add in. Like, for example, finishes of matches, it will, like, show you the finish on screen of the match, but I want to, uh, on some, have a specific finish. Um, or certain things happening in matches, so yeah, you can, you will be able to see that on screen, like the match reports. But there's going to be bits that I like kind of replace and uh, like imagine that that what I'm like saying is really happening, and uh, like some of it will probably bleh, <laughs> replace what's on screen. So um, yes, let's go into the uh, yeah the event right now and see what happens on the first episode of Mock Crush Monday. Now to open the show, we have no commentators at the announce table, um, so something is going on straight away. Um, first thing that happens, no chance hits, and everyone goes wild, Vince McMahon, Mr. McMahon starts making his way to the ring with his, you know, his, uh, his walk that he does. As he's getting into the ring, it looks like he falls and nearly tears his quad. But he is, like, just messing with the crowd, and, uh, yeah, that gets a good reaction, you know, him having a bit of, uh, joking with, uh, with the fans there. Um, but, yeah, so, next, what he does is, he grabs a microphone, and he starts to say why he's here. He says, tonight, he is, you know, he's not here as an owner anymore. He has been relinquished of his power, obviously, now that Triple H is the, uh, you know, the man in charge, pretty much. He, tonight, has been sent by the board of directors as a uh, spokesman or um, someone to relay their message. And he has a big announcement, and the big announcement is there's going to be a new commissioner. Now, he looks over at the announce table and mentions that the, you know, there's no announcers on the show. And he says that tonight we're going to debut two brand new announcers, and the two brand new announcers are... Tom Phillips and Scott Hall. These two then come out to the ring together to Scott Hall's, let's say, the NWO music. And obviously there's a big reaction here. Scott Hall doing his classic entrance. Tom Phillips as well getting a great reaction. And uh, yeah, they make their way to the announce table and uh, take their headsets. They start off by um, saying, well, Scott Hall says, well, Kev at some point to Tom Phillips. And you think that Scott Hall is, like, botched there. But actually, it turns out he's just joking with Tom Phillips. He knows it's not Kevin Nash. Because we all know there's a difference between those two people. But anyway, back to Vince McMahon in the ring. He mentions as well that the organization is no longer called the WWE. It's, it's gone. Um, that name will not be heard again. He is announcing now that we are bringing back the F. And he just then gets the microphone and just says, Screw the pandas. Like, we are bringing back the F, and the new name will be CWF. When he says, um, screw the pandas, it pans to the crowd, and we see our special guests, George the Animal Steel, Coco Beware, and Jake the Snake Roberts. Not look very happy when he says that, but yeah, he announces the new name of the company as a CWF. He also officially announces the name of the show. It is Mock Crush Monday now. And yes, he says he's going to go back to his uh, big announcement, and that is a new commissioner. He announces that the brand new commissioner is Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar's music hits. And he makes his way to the ring with Paul Heyman who looks a bit confused at this decision. Maybe thinking it could have been him who was made brand new commissioner. But no, it's Brock. Brock and Paul get into the ring with Vince. And uh, yeah, Brock goes to get a microphone uh, which makes Paul Heyman look very concerned at what's about to happen. But Brock says he is going to make his first match tonight. And his match will be Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins in a hardcore match as the main event. 
which gets a, a great reaction from the crowd. They they want to see that. And Paul Heyman, you know, he he went from looking skeptical, and now he's like, yeah, that, well done, Brock. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all Brock says. Um, Vince McMahon, then they have a bit of a like, well. Just a bit of back and forth, but you know, they're on the same page because Brock obviously is happy to be in a position of power. And then we hear King of Kings hit. Triple H makes his way to the ring with Stephanie and he gets into the ring. He is not happy. Um, he is not happy at all that they have lost like power now because obviously Brock Lesnar will have power as commissioner. And yeah, this is not a good night for the authority. And yeah, that's pretty much the end of that segment. Um, so yeah, you can see the results on screen now. It got an overall rating of 83%. Uh, Brock Lesnar debuted his new gimmick as commissioner. It got a negative response. I don't know why putting in a Brock, putting Brock Lesnar in a role where he speaks would get a negative response. Can't ever tell why that would be. Um, but yeah, so let's go to the next part of the show. Now, in the... Uh, Oh yes, there's one thing I forgot to mention as well. While uh, Mr. McMahon was on the original promo before, he announced two big championship matches that have... Uh, well, actually, this was announced by... Uh... So now we have our first match of the evening. And it's going to be the All-American American, Jack Swagger, taking on the not All-American American, Bad News Barrett. Now they come out, they have a... Pretty good match, back and forth, uh, your standard opening match. Uh, the big moment in this match comes when Jack Swagger hits a German suplex on Bad News Barrett. And at this point, you know, Bad News Barrett is a big man. Like, the crowd are fully behind Jack Swagger. He's probably getting the biggest reaction of his career. Like, there's massive USA chants and Jack Swagger looks really happy. He looks like he's about to go for, you know, his finisher, the Patriot Lock. But out of nowhere, Dolph Ziggler hits the ring and he hits the zigzag and starts absolutely obliterating Jack Swagger after. Like, yeah, after hitting the zigzag, he's just absolutely giving Jack Swagger a vicious beatdown. Like, Wade doesn't want any part of it. He just looks looks over and thinks, no, like... <laughs> and yeah, Dolph is just so vicious. And there's one thing about Dolph as well. You, like, can hear him saying something which sounds like it's in a different language it sounds a bit german as he's beating on uh, jack swagger so yeah dolph ziggler is attacking swagger and just gives him a vicious beat down and then you know leaves swagger laying and uh, obviously swagger gets to win through a disqualification but yeah so let's have a look so dolph ziggler debuts a new gimmick it got a positive response dolph ziggler's turn was completed and he is now a heel Dolph Ziggler gained overness from this turn. So yeah, um, all looks good. <laughs> now next up, we have a tag team championship match. Well, <laughs> no longer a tag team title. It is now for the CWF Butt Buddies titles. Also, I should have mentioned earlier, on Vincent Mann's promo, he announced the, uh, the changing of the titles because... Um, if you would have seen one of my previous episodes, uh, which I recommend you like go back and watch if uh, if you would like, um, all the title names have changed, uh, all the show names have changed, pay per view names have changed, everything's been changed pretty much. Uh, so yes, this is the CWF Butt Buddies titles, and it's going to be the Usos defending against the newly named team of Daddy's Bitches, which is Antonio Cesaro and Tyson Kidd. Um, I should just say Cesaro since that's all he's known as now. Um, but yeah, so these two, they have a, a you know a good tag match, um, typical standard tag match, you know, uh, you, are you so in peril? Um, probably Jimmy. Um, yeah, but Jay Uso eventually gets the win with a roll up on Cesaro. Um, you know, this is not good. Cesaro is not happy. If you you can actually hear him, the camera pans in. You can hear him say he does not like this finish at all. So he is not happy, and uh, you know he is bitching about the finish, living up to the team name there. Tyson Kidd, he doesn't look happy either. They've they've lost another big match. Um, yes, and I'll be back after this commercial break. Okay, so I'm back after that commercial break. Um, yeah, so. Jey Uso uh, got the roll up on Cesaro, so they won the match. They kept the tag team championships, 
And uh, let's look at what happened from the road agent notes. We've got Tyson Kidd debuted his new gimmick. It got a negative response. Don't know why. <laughs> Zara debuted his new gimmick. It got a negative response. Tyson Kidd and Zara are both losing overness because of their weak gimmicks. Oh dear. Well, not a good start for the uh, for the daddy's bitches. But oh well. Next up, we have a continuation of what just happened. We have the Uso still in the ring. Daddy's bitches are still in the ring. And Daddy's bitches are like bitching to the referee about what just happened. Uh, Cesaro saying, oh, Jay had the tights. Um, yeah, he rolled him up with the tights. Um, yeah, and then what happens is Daddy's bitches attack the Usos. They start giving them a beat down. And at this point, there is a run in from two superstars. Well, Two former superstars. Yes, there is a run-in from two former superstars. These two former superstars. The first one, we see the camera. It zooms in on them and it is El Patron. The artist formerly known as Alberto Del Rio has hit the ring in a shocking... Like, no one ever thought they'd see him in a WWE ring again after what happened. And the other person who has run in is Juventud Guerrero. He's a former WCW Cruiserweight Champion, former WWE star, everything, ECW, yeah. So he runs out along with El Patron, and these two make the save for the Usos and fight off Daddy's Bitches. And let's have a look at the road agent notes after that shocking event. So, Juventud Guerrero gained overness from this segment, Tyson Kidd gained overness from this segment, and Cesaro gained overness from this segment. So overall, good segment. I like it. So after the uh, announcement from Mr. McMahon and that segment ending, we go backstage where Triple H and Stephanie look, you know, they're not happy, they're backstage, they're, they're not happy about losing power to Brock Lesnar, they're not in a good mood and they're not happy about, you know, their boy Seth Rollins being put in the main event against Roman Reigns in a hardcore match, so they don't like that at all. And uh, yeah, they're walking through backstage and they see Paige and AJ Lee, um, and they seem to be laughing about something, Paige and AJ, which, you know... Annoys Triple H and Stephanie a lot, and uh, Triple H just says, "Stephanie, you deal with this. I'm just going." So Triple H walks off. Stephanie stays with these two. She says, "What do you find this funny? Do you find it funny that Brock Lesnar's commissioner and you know AJ and Paige are saying that they didn't even see that segment?" Um, but yeah, Stephanie angrily just says, "Well, tonight, you know, you can see how funny you find it when you're fired because tonight." You two, AJ and Paige, will be in a freeway tag match taking on the team of the Slayers and also taking on the team of the former Funkadactyls. And whoever loses the match, whoever is pinned in that match or made to submit, will be fired from the CWF. And yes, obviously AJ and Paige, they look concerned at this moment. Stephanie does a little smile. And uh, yeah, that segment Face the Black. And that's one that's like, for, that's one, an example of a, a segment which I didn't book on the show because I didn't have enough slots. And there wasn't really anything where I could do that type of thing um, on this because it is limited EWR in terms of what you can do. But yes, so a match has been booked tonight. AJ and Paige versus the Slayers, which is obviously Layla and Summer Rae, and the former Funkadactyls, Naomi and Cameron. So next up on the show, we've got another match. It's going to be Kane taking on Randy Orton. And this is a little bit of, uh, you know, frustration from the authority. They're putting Kane up against Randy, you know, a former member of the authority. And they want they want Randy taken out in this one. Um, so, yeah, this one is pretty much as it says on there. Uh, yeah, the commentary is about accurate for this one because I want it to be a quick match. Well, not too quick, but I wanted it to be uh, not the longest match on the show. Just a decent match where... Randy wins with an RKO, and he, obviously Randy is celebrating his victory. And after the match, uh, Kane, he doesn't look angry. He doesn't look like... He he just basically looks really sad. He does like a really sad face as he's leaving. And uh, we've not really seen that side of Kane, um, really. He just looks like he, he doesn't want to be there. And uh, yeah, that's the end of that segment. <laughs> So next up, we have another match, and this time it's going to be Daniel Bryan against The Big Show. And I can't help but feel, again, this is the authority. Obviously, they don't like... Ban no, no. 
if I could speak. They, you know, I've never liked Daniel Bryan, so why not put him up against the big man, the big show? Um, in this one, some specific stuff happened, and the big event in this one was Daniel Bryan hitting the steps after Big Show threw him into them. Um, Daniel Bryan hits the steps, and his head hits really hard on them. Um, from this point onwards, Daniel Bryan looks sluggish, he looks slow, he doesn't look himself, and eventually the finish comes when Big Show just hits him with a, a WMD... One, two, three, big show wins, and like the crowd seems pretty stunned because Daniel Bryan does not move after that at all. He is laying motionless. Um, big show is celebrating. I either you know he knows what he's done or he doesn't, but he seems like he is happy either way. Um, so he's celebrating as he leaves. At this point, the referee looks at Daniel Bryan, he throws up the X sign to say, you know, he's got a big problem here. The medics rush out to the ring. Brie Bella as well comes to the ring with the medics. And she looks very, very concerned. Um, you know, this is almost breaking character because Brie Bella's out there. Um, but yeah, she is with her husband, Daniel Bryan. And Daniel Bryan gets an absolutely massive, you know, uh, well, thank you, Bryan. All the chance, thank you, Bryan. Uh, Daniel Bryan chance, yes, chance. Well, probably not yes, chance in this situation, but yeah. He is taken off by the medics. He doesn't move at all. And, you know, people are concerned for Daniel Bryan at this point. So, yeah, the show is taking quite a sad turn now. Um, so, yes, let's go to the next segment. Okay, next up we have another championship match. And this is for the former United States Championship held by Rusev. And that is the CWF pun title. Now... This one is like a big slugfest, you know, these two are just beating on each other. Obviously, you know, they've, they've been feuding, they, they do not like each other. Um, Cena obviously representing the, the US in this one. Um, yeah, something just came up. Um, yeah, uh, so Cena is representing the US. Rusev, he is, you know, the thing that is interesting in this one is Rusev has come out alone like there's no Lana like there seems to be concern like Rusev he's looking behind him like wondering where Lana is she seems to have just gone missing from the point where um he was making the like his entrance with her so yeah um the finish in this one comes when Cena and Rusev are brawling on the outside of the ring and we cut to the uh the Titan Tron and we see Lana holding some Jehovah's Witness leaflets now she is backstage and she knocks on the door of someone and Adam Rose opens the door and she is like, you can't really hear what they're saying, but it looks like she is offering him one of these leaflets, uh, this Jehovah's Witness leaflet. Adam Rose, you know, you can just faintly hear him say something like, no thanks, love, or something like that. Probably not in that voice. But yeah, he, he's not happy, you know, he, well, he's not interested, I should say, and he, he just smiles and like, you know, quietly shuts the door. Lana just looks sad. She's looking down, looking really sad. Rusev glances over at this and does not does not look pleased. And him and Cena are brawling on the outside. And as a result, the distraction from the Titan Tron as well. They both get counted out. Meaning that Rusev retains his CWF pun title for this show. They're still fighting afterwards. And, the, you know, they're fighting everywhere. They're fighting into the crowd everywhere. And eventually they have to get separated by plenty of road agents and referees and everything and uh, yeah that's where that segment ends so let's look at the next one okay so next up we cut to a vignette um, of sorts now this vignette is filmed entirely in black and white we hear a crowd we see like little shots of a crowd laughing uh, like some of them drinking um, and it looks like some kind of comedy club like junglers that type of thing so we see reactions from a crowd who seem happy, they're smiling, they're laughing. And we also hear uh, a male voice mumbling something. And after the mumbles, we hear like laughing, more laughing. And uh, yeah, it definitely seems like a comedy club, but you can't quite tell who the, uh, the main person doing the mumbling is. So yeah, we end that segment there. And that is just a quick little vignette um, hyping someone maybe. But yeah, you'll have to uh, tune in maybe next time to see where that goes. Um, so yeah, let's go to the next segment. Okay, so now we have got 
one of the uh, well one of the big two matches booked for this show, but this one is absolutely huge. Has the biggest implications because we are going to lose one of our divas tonight. One is going to be fired on the spot, and uh, yes, so we have Paige and AJ Lee versus Slayers versus the former Funkadactyls, it should say. Um, but yes, and ironically, actually no, the finish isn't how I would have uh, booked it. But this is what happens. Um, we get to a point where Paige and Cameron are legal. There's a brawl with the other girls pretty much on the outside. Paige and Cameron are the only ones in the ring. Paige is in the corner and she starts tuning up the band looking really sad. Like, you know, getting ready to do her super kick. She goes for the super kick and misses. Cameron goes to hit the girl by, but this is countered by Paige into the Paige Turner, who then gets the one, two, three... Cameron's career in the CWF is over. She is going to be fired tonight. And Paige just looks like she is going to be in crying. AJ, like who is now got into the ring, looks completely shocked at what has just happened. Um, Naomi doesn't show up sympathy. She is just celebrating, like doing cartwheels because she hasn't been fired. She doesn't show much sympathy for her former partner. Um, and yeah, Slayla, well... The Slayers are just kind of there. Um, but yeah, uh, so Paige is, looks inconsolable. She looks so, so sad. And she starts screaming and crying. And um, we there's a large section of fans exiting the, re exiting the arena at this point. Um, they are just, they are disgusted at what they've seen. Because they now know that the young promising star of Total Divas is not going to be in a CWF ring again. And, you know, there's a thank you Cameron Chan. Everyone is, you know, for the, from the fans that are actually left. Um, but yes. Uh, so, no more Cameron. I, I'm really sorry about that, everyone. Uh, I know you were probably really looking forward to seeing Cameron, but she obviously won't ever be seen again in, um, <laughs> in this uh, company. But yeah, um, so now let's go to the next segment. So at this point, everyone is still in the ring that... Well, the main divas in the ring are AJ, Paige, and Cameron. Cameron, who looks like, you know, she looks distraught. Paige is, like, inconsolable. AJ's trying to console Paige, but Paige is just absolutely screaming and crying. She can't believe what she's just done. Like, she's got rid of Cameron. And at this point, Stephanie McMahon's music hits, uh, Queendom, and she comes out, she grabs a microphone, and she just looks at the ring and she looks at Cameron and just says, Bye, girl, bye. And at this point, Paige again starts screaming and crying. She can't believe it. And, yeah, Cameron is gone. Stephanie leaves with her music playing. Obviously, that's a little bit of success for the authority tonight. Uh, they've fired someone, um, which must make them really happy. And, uh, yeah, so let's go to the main event now of the evening. Okay, so now we have our main event, and this is going to be a great match. We've got Roman Reigns against Seth Rollins in a hardcore match. This, you know, will be the longest match of the night. And, yeah, I mean, pretty much everything that's happening there uh, on screen, I guess. But then again, there's not really much hardcore stuff. So, yeah, integrate some more hardcore stuff, some crowd brawling. They're brawling everywhere. Um, you know, there's items being used and everything. And uh, in this one, the finish comes when Roman Reigns... Put Seth Rollins through a table with a spear that is set up in the corner. So he pins him. He gets the one, two, three, and Roman Reigns gets a big win going into what may be WrestleMania, but at this point, who knows? Because uh, there's been no official announcement on the pay per view names. Maybe WrestleMania's still there, maybe it's not, but obviously Roman Reigns has a guaranteed um, CWF 100 million subscribers championship shot at that show. Um, but yeah. Uh, at this point, Roman Reigns' music hits, but then it cuts off and Brock Lesnar's music hits. Brock Lesnar appears on the, uh, well, at the entrance ramp along with Paul Heyman. He's, again, he's got a microphone in his hand and Paul Heyman looks quite concerned. Brock Lesnar lifts the microphone up in the air. Paul Heyman, again, just looks like, no, Brock, don't do it. Don't, don't speak. Um, Brock then looks at Paul Heyman Paul Heyman hands him his 100 million subscribers championship and then Brock Lesnar lifts that in, up in the air instead.
To which Paul Heyman looks pleased. He looks happy at that. Roman Reigns then looks down in the ring and he sees Seth Rollins, the nudes in the briefcase, briefcase. He picks that up and holds it above his head. At which point, Brock Lesnar, wanting to counter this, he looks at Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman gives him a nod. And then Brock Lesnar lifts up Paul Heyman above his head. At this point then, Roman Reigns, who is in the ring, he, he puts down the briefcase and he looks at the body of Seth Rollins, who has barely moved since this uh, spear through the table, and he picks up Seth Rollins and holds him above his head. So the final image in this show is Brock Lesnar holding up Paul Heyman as his trophy, and Roman Reigns holding up Seth Rollins as his trophy. And at that point, we see the CWF logo. And that is it, you know. We fade to black. And uh, the commentators, Tom Phillips and Scott Hall, you know, thank everyone for watching. And uh, that is your episode of Mock Crush Monday. So, um, yeah, let's go to the reports and see what the highest rated and lowest rated segments were tonight. Wow, okay, so we got a 78% rating on that show and uh, that is pretty good um that is pretty good yeah um and it looks like ooh everything's pretty close match of it looks like the rating for the match of the night goes to big show daniel bryan interestingly i did not expect that lowest rated match of the night well i should say segment in general out of all of them is uh, the usos beating daddy's bitches um but yeah generally we didn't go lower than a 70 on any of that show. Uh, there's a lot. Oh, yeah, we did. <laughs> Sorry. Actually, lowest rated segment of the night was the uh, the Divas Triangle Tag Match, unfortunately. Um, maybe the rating was put down because all the fans left uh, when Cameron was, you know, <laughs> got rid of. But, yeah, um, so that was the lowest rated. Highest rated was Big Show Daniel Bryan. Um, but, yeah, generally, I I'm quite happy with those ratings. And, uh, yeah, I hope that I hope that you enjoyed that show. Um yeah, so next up we have, I think, Figures Mania, which is the former main event. Uh, I think it's just, yeah, the former show ma known as Main Event. So it'll be Figures Mania coming up next. I'll be uh, showing you that episode soon, maybe doing something in between it as well. But yeah, um, okay. Okay, so let's just have a quick look at my Extreme Mail, see what I've got um, after that show was done. Um, apparently... I think that's Pat Patterson. He's saying Cesaro is losing heat because you are pushing him too much. Because apparently getting rolled up by Jey Uso and then um, being attacked by the debuting El Patron and Juventud Guerrero means I'm pushing him too much. Yeah, okay, Pat Patterson. That makes sense. Um, next, okay. Yeah, I just saw this one off camera. Daniel Bryan and Big Show didn't click in their match. Maybe due to their mismatching styles causing their styles not to gel. Okay, so it was match of the night and I think it was 85%. Right, it didn't click at all. I think Pat Patterson needs firing. In fact, I might I might fire him like, you know what? Let, let's do it on screen. I'm going to fire him for that. Oh my god, a 6.78 rate from Mark Cross Monday. We, we would, that is something that just does not happen. Um, I don't think in wrestling these days, but I'll take it. I'll take it. And also, Pat Patterson, it is you. Yeah, you refuses to even... I, there's some kind of glitch in this game where um, everyone refuses to begin negotiations and everyone hates you for some reason and your staff. But I'm terminating you because you're stupid. Anyway, so... Um, yes, that was pretty much the show. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Um, but yeah... Okay, so I hope everyone enjoyed that show. I've probably said that a million times. Um, I just want to say something at the end of this video. Um, I don't want to, like, break character or, like, you know, break kayfabe in wrestling terms. But um, I, I'll be honest, like, I was really nervous about doing this. I've had these ideas um, in my head and plenty more that you will see in the upcoming episodes for a long time. But as you could probably tell... Um, Especially near the beginning of the episode, I, I was quite nervous. I don't generally get nervous on my videos, um, but this one, like, I really, I know for a start, like, my wrestling content gets, like, higher views than, than my other stuff, uh, especially my gaming. Like, EWR has been, like, one of the biggest successes on my channel, um, and, like, I, I was nervous because, as you can still, like, kind of tell I am. Um, and I probably, I messed some things up, I forgot some things, I didn't do things in the right order, um, and stuff like that. Like, for example, at the beginning when, when, uh, Vince McMahon was out, 
and uh, he said screw the pandas as a little uh, <laughs> a little slap in the face to the WWF um, the World Wildlife Fund I wanted two people who were in the crowd dressed as pandas to just walk out at that point so like yeah imagine that happened as well um, but yeah little things like that I forgot because uh, I'm only writing down so much and generally most of it's committed to memory um, but I've had this exact show in mind for ages now like all those ideas I've wanted to share with you all and this is just the beginning. There's so many ideas I have. There's so much I want to do. I want to make this series interactive. So if uh, anyone has any ideas or any suggestions for uh, feuds, gimmicks, uh, stables, anything, I'm all ears. And I'm, as like I say on every, well, like I say, um, I was going to say like I always say, but I don't always say it, but I always think it like any feedback is very welcome, you know, whether it's positive or negative, I like to hear back from you what you think, um, but yeah, I, I hope to get more comfortable with this series as it goes on, like I've said before, I'm a perfectionist, so like I either don't do something or try and do it the best, and then what happens is I wait a long time like I have with this, as you can tell, the last video is in May, I think, um, so it's been like two months but when I do do it it's not perfect anyway so I might as well just do it earlier um so yeah the next episode of EWR will be a lot sooner than well there'll be a lot less uh, of a wait than there was in the um previous uh, one um but yeah so also I'm sorry there's been like so many stops and starts in this one um like editing this is going to be difficult because um like I want to cover certain things up uh, like for example in the uh, the segment with the comedy club I want to cover up the identity of who that is although you might know who it is anyway if you've seen like one of my earlier episodes um, of this playthrough but yeah so I'm going to stop talking now because uh, this is going to be my longest video and I don't want to take any more of your time than I already have but I hope you enjoyed this um, I hope you enjoy my uh, unique sense of humour um, there is much more to come I've got so many ideas and it's just about um, going ahead with them like I'm sorry that I was quite nervous on this one and uh, like I was talking really fast and just trying to get a lot of information out there um, but yeah like I hope to grow into this series and grow into uh, like get better at this type of thing as I go along I have the ideas it's just implementing them and having them come across right so yeah um, there'll be a lot more to come from this series and from my channel in general Thank you again so much for watching um, and I hope to see you again in another one of my videos whatever that might be so yeah, goodbye everyone.